Lovely to meet you. Um, what three words would you use to describe this film, Bob Marley, One Love? Spiritual. Um, inspirational. And revolutionary. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. An interesting. Renato, a difficult time to romanticize. Right. Um, in terms of Jamaican history, the long term, you know, ill effects are still being felt by a generation. But a great education for those who don't know about that. And what I wanted to know is juxtaposed with, you know, the lifetime of an icon. The challenge for you was to kind of bring that alive on screen. So a mouthwatering prospect, I'd imagine, for a director of your ilk. Speak about that in terms of how you embraced it and talk about that from in terms of the perspective you had once the challenge had kind of landed on your desk? Yeah, I think from the very first meeting I had, Ziggy Marley was on the call. So I knew I had the support of the family. Uh, I knew I had his offspring saying, we want you to direct this movie. And, and that was like a big vote of confidence mm -hmm. for me. Um, and I also knew that I wasn't necessarily a biopic genre guy. Like it wasn't, musical biopics weren't the thing that I was setting out to make and so this felt like an opportunity to do something different and about somebody that I thought it was a superhero you know I love Bob I didn't want to mess with Bob <laughs> um, don't mess with Bob basically um, but then I thought well if I don't do it who else so um, and I know they had tried to make the movie for 25 30 years so for whatever reason the universe said now's the time now's the time and so I started thinking about films like City of God, Black Orpheus, Monos Peros, how those films were woven into the political aspects of those films without being, you know, didactic. And how do you how do you make a film? How do you make a musical biopic kind of coming in through the side door? So that was the approach from the very beginning. Was like let's 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 use those as as our, our starting point um, about the flavor. We, we we know we want to shoot in Jamaica. We want, we know we want to cast real Jamaicans. Um, that was the starting point. And of mm. course, we had to cast the movie. We had to find our Bob, which we, fortunately for us, we found uh, Kings of Benadir. If it were a movie was going to garner a multitude of opinions, it was this one. Um, so much to be responsible with, so much to factor in and consider our thought. You all did a great job. Thank you. Know? you. Thank um, you. I'm interested in where you felt, though, you had to be most responsible. I think the language is, is uh, super important, you know. Um, you know, the last film I had seen, uh, you know, uh, I didn't want to make Cool Runnings as much as, uh, much as I love that, much as I love that film. Um, when you see Bob, he speaks a certain way. He has a very specific way of talking. Um, and I knew I was making a studio movie, so I'm, I'm thinking, may have to subtitle it, but that's the route we're going to go because um, you can't water that down. You can't, you can't make every word uh, to be understood, because even when I watch Bob, I don't understand everything, but I, but I understand everything. So if you can do it cinematically, if you can do it with emotion, then you don't care about the words that you, don't, that you miss. Um, and so, yeah, the template was, if you understand every third word, you get it. If you understand every fourth word, you're lost. And we lived in that third to fourth word for a while, and so it was just trying to dial that in to a point where it felt like, okay, we hit the sweet spot. It was a sweet spot of language in this film because it's lyrical, it's poetic, um, and you, can't, you can't, uh, can't force that. Was there any part of the film that was really challenging to capture and tell, and if so, why? All of it, all of it, because of Bob. Mm -hmm. um, Bob demanded it, he demanded excellence um, in every department, um, whether we were shooting an insert or doing a 300, 400 person crowd scene. Um, it was all taken with that high level of intensity. That was what this movie was. It just demanded it. Um, it was challenging in that way. Um, I think everybody I met, you know, whether it was the drivers or the grip truck were like, mm. Bob, you know what I mean? Like, he like, that's our guy. Like, you know, we like King Richard, but come on, you know what I mean? Like, like this is different, <laughs> you know? Like, there was still like, I, you know, like there was just that, that feeling of, like, don't mess about with it. Mm -hmm. Don't mess about. Mm -hmm. Don't mess about. And I think we all felt it, you know? The, the cast felt it. Like, everybody felt it. But equally, everybody wanted to support the film to make it successful. So I never felt 
like I didn't have support. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I didn't have to look too far. The family was there every step of the way, which was amazing. They made everything richer in that way. Um, I felt like I had Bob on set with me in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. You know, they walked the same, the cadence. You could see the, uh, the little details that came out from that. Yeah. Great job. You, you well do done. a fantastic Thank you. job. Appreciate Thank you. you guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs>